Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm actually really excited to be here to see a lot of people for the first time. This has been an awesome experience so far. So I just kind of want to just say thank you. And it's been very exciting. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Flux, kind of the what and the why. Um, can everyone hear me in the back? We're good? OK. And uh, so let's get, just jump into it. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm gonna go through a little bit about like what the mission is. What is all this about? I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail about like what Flux actually is, and then go into some of the more like strategic things, like why are we doing it? Why are we making certain decisions? And some of that is trying to get to the telling of a story, trying to give us an idea of how do we go from where we are now to where we wanna be, and then we'll take some questions at the end. All right, so I started out with Nix about almost a decade ago. Uh, I encountered it randomly while doing Haskell work, and then I realized this thing was amazing, became an instant fanatic, loved it. And I started using it. Uh, I started having projects. I started using it as like an individual tool, started learning more and more about it, and kind of acquiring all those great superpowers. And then... Eventually, I started having a chance to like introduce this to teams, start to bring into corporations, start to bring into uh, teams that I've had a little bit of technical control over. And every time I did this, I realized that Nick solved a lot of problems. A lot of the issues of like, oh, hey, my VM broke. I need to rebuild it from the readme. I'll see you in two days sorts of problems went away. I was able to travel the world and bring it to like planes and radios and do all sorts of crazy, amazing, wonderful things. I uh, was able to like, do like hardware in the loop testing and go do stuff I probably should not have done. But in the end, I had all these, these great outcomes. We had results and we delivered them fast. Except as soon as I'd leave, all that would be ripped out. We handed off to some contractor and the first thing they do is like, oh, we can't understand this. Boom, they'd rip it out. And so longevity, adoption, this was something I struggled with and it was really disheartening. It, was, it saddened me because I really wanted them to have these great things. I saw the value in it. It was hard for me as an individual to kind of get this thing adopted. So uh, realizing that, I'm like, okay, how do I fix this? What can I do to do this? So I started kind of reaching out, getting more involved in community things, trying to figure out like what actually makes this ecosystem tick? What, why does it work? Why is it effective? Why do I actually love it so much? Because if I can't figure it out for myself, how am I going to be able to tell the story to others? Uh, so reached out, tried to figure this out, and what I realized is there's no silver bullet here, right? Okay, maybe that should have been obvious in retrospect, but there's no one thing that we can fix. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of efforts, and uh, I can't do this alone. So that starts to kind of lead me down the path of like, well, how do we fix it? Hey, let's uh, actually do this with some sort of a, like, tell the end-to-end -end story of why people should care and how people can adopt. And then that starts leading to this being a bigger problem. Hey, are, who's working on this? Who's working on this full time, right? This is not gonna be some sort of a side gig or like some sort of like hobby project on the side. Like we gotta dedicate time and people to this at some sort of a scale. And that starts to imply, hey, let's start figuring out like, is there a company doing this? And so this talk is trying to kind of tell you about where we're going with that idea. All right, so what is Flox? I'm gonna go through, um, an example of like what is the adoption flow and the difficulties people sometimes have during that adoption flow, and then go into a little bit about like, hey, how are we going to address problems at each step of those uh, that adoption flow? All right, I want to install Lix because someone told me about it. They said it was really cool. You know, they can't, they, they just won't shut up about it. Thanks. Okay, I go to install this thing. What's a single user install? What's a multi user install? I have no idea. All right, I'm gonna go do something else. Right? Or, hey, how do I install this thing? Is there an easy way to install it? Let's go look at the docs. Uh-oh, right? Again, these things are improving, but this is an adoption hurdle. How do I uh, install this into some like corporate environment where there's all these strict controls about what I can and can't install, and you want me to curl something down? Well, it's gonna be weird. So this is a hurdle. All right, first thing I wanna do, great, I've heard about Nix packages, let's start using them. What's a channel? What's a flake? What are these branches? What are these releases things? Sometimes I want to like build some software, or I want to run some software, and I start like rebuilding core utils. Why? What's happening? Right? Like we know we see this happening. All right, all right. Control C, something went bad. But the U, the U user is going to be just sitting there waiting for hours, and they're like, all right, this is worthless, and then they never come back. That's a problem. 
hey, uh, what's a profile? What's a shell? What are these environments? How am I supposed to use these things? Which use cases are they for? Again, you know, maybe you could eventually learn the nuances, the distinctions, but like, who's telling me exactly like what is the proper path? What should I use for my use case? Because you know, I'm trying to solve X, Y, Z problem. I don't really know. These are all very new to me. Great. Uh, now I want to build my own packages. Like, what's a Nix package is no longer enough. I got some custom thing. I got something that no one cares about or it's proprietary. I need to bring it in. How do I do this? Uh oh. Builders. There's 15 different builders. There's seven different language Nix tools for my ecosystem. Which one do I use? What's the difference? How do I distinguish between them? How do I decide if I'm a newcomer? Again, pretty difficult. It requires expertise. All right. I was able to build everything, I'm good. Now what? How do I manage this artifact? Where do I put it? How do I cache it? What are the tools for this? How do I then, after this, how do I tell the world that I've done something awesome, right? And now I've got FUBAR 2.0 out, but how can I tell the world? How can I get this out to my users who might know even less than me about Nix? Uh-oh, problem. Now I want to do this in runtime. I now want to manage this over time. I want to kind of manage the life cycle of you know, my containers, the place that this is deployed in. How do I do you know, push-pull deployments? How do I do you know, red-green deployments? What am I supposed to do here? There's all sorts of solutions, but like, which one do I pick? What's, what are the differences? Uh-oh. So Flux is trying to kind of look at this entire cycle. So there's no single thing that I want to trim it down to. It's more, let's tell the story end to end. So I'm just going to go through some of the things we're working on, not comprehensive, but just give you a flavor of the sorts of things we're doing to address those problems. So I'm installing stuff. Hey, let's have just native installers and in the various ecosystems. Does it really matter? Maybe, maybe not. We can argue about the benefits of this, but you know, if it's comfortable for someone who is from a particular ecosystem to just use their standard installation processes to just give Nix a try. All right, so let's have like native installers. It lowers the barrier to entry. It's nice. All right, now I'm accessing Nix packages, but half the time I'm rebuilding core utils. Well, sometimes I just want like a Nix packages where I know everything is there. It's built, it's cached. I just want to be able to bring things in. So we call this concept the catalog. And it's pretty much Nix packages, just with a promise. Everything in it is buildable and substitutable. Nice. And then on top of that, we can build access to semantic versions. I want FUBAR 1.5 today, but you know, tomorrow I might want 1.4. Make that accessible to someone who's new. Like, yeah, I can go reach in there and go figure out which commit to grab and weave it into my expressions, but let's make this easier. All right, uh, the whole problems with shells and environments, profiles, these are sometimes confusing and overlapping. All right, so let's take some of the best ideas from these things and try to kind of create a concept, right? Started with this idea of, well, we got profiles, they're useful, they're ad hoc, but then now I don't even wanna start sharing them. Well, if we make them declarative, I can serialize them somewhere, I can push them somewhere, I can share them and give, uh, get reuse out of these things that otherwise would have to be imperatively managed and built up. And that makes them reusable. Sweet, that usually sounds like a good thing. Um, now I wanna build my own things. Again, this is essentially the language Nix problem is a portion of it, but also giving people a smooth introduction slowly start having you know, these you know, more templates. We're seeing a lot of efforts to improve this problem. But again, this is another area of interest to uh, get better at. Now we start getting into maybe a newer concept, but I now have my artifact. What do I do with this thing? It's, it's great that I have it, but how do, what do I do with this? So let's start publishing these things. I wanna tell the world, FUBAR 2.0 is out because it's great. You get all sorts of foo out of it. But how do I do so? So let's make that easy. Let's set a convention, let's set a standard on how we actually do this sort of thing so that over time, uh, people benefit from the same thing I just did. And one nice thing here is, cool, once I publish something, that goes into that catalog. Great, now I've got a flywheel. I know how to produce, I know how to consume things others have produced for me. I know how to kind of add to that package set. And then now other people get that same great onboarding that I did, but now they're using my software. And that's always a good thing. All right, and then now I want to be able to do, I want to interact with uh, runtime. All right, so let's make it easy to throw everything into a container. Let's make it easy to escape 
from you know, the confines of the, the runtimes we might have and provide those escape hatches. How do I interact with my like, DevOps department? How do I provide uh, useful reporting that you know, people might want? How do I do uh, distribution of compliance builds? These are the sorts of things that we want to start being able to provide. So that's a little bit about some of the details of like, the sorts of things we're working on, um, but why? Right? What's the strategy here? So larger scale adoption of this like, fundamental superpower that Nix represents, um, we have to tell the end-to-end -end story. Um, I think the, the talk we had with uh, Bunyan was great. Like, you have to tell a story. You can't just say, here's a great feature, it's not gonna be enough. Now, stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right? I can't just tell you at the very end. I need to kind of take you on that journey. So I think that's what we need. Um, and then the whole beginning, middle, end means that, well, there has to be an end. There has to be, again, a way for you to you know, come into the, the ecosystem and also leave it. And that means if you try to do something that has a lot of lock-in, well, we're, we're too small to make that sustainable. So you have, to, you have to avoid that problem. How do we do that? Um, I want to go into then categorization. So how do we think about this problem of how do we actually build a sustainable uh, effort? And so we split this up. We call these the, the four Cs. So there's community things. These are stuff like the, the health of the community, making sure that Nix is stable, make sure that it's a strong community. Because if it's not, then hey, then the fundamental things we're trying to build and give to our users is already shaky. So the efforts that have been run, the, 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 the board kind of being revamped, having the stronger teams, uh, investing a lot into some of the, you know, the Nix packages, making sure that's got, got improvements and has standardizations in there making sure Nix itself has you know, a, a you know, better cycle. These are all things that are helpful and useful. The various like, bugs and fixes are just things that are fundamental that help everyone. Cool, these go into the community bucket. Uh, then we have things that are convenient. So, hey, I'm an individual developer, I like having tools. But as an individual, I don't wanna start figuring out how to sign in here or sign in there or you know, get nickel and diamond on this or that. Like, I just want convenience. Excellent. Well, that seems to be a very good candidate for the sorts of things that belong in open source. Then we start getting into collaboration. This is where you have multiple people, multiple people working together. You're in a small project or a small company or a small team. You just want to be able to work together. Great. You need to have insights. You need to have a little bit of visibility into what's going on in the team. You, know, you all trust each other. You're all working on one uh, coherent goal. Now we're starting to talk about things like there are services that we can start provide. Give you insights into you know, your, your package sets, give you insights into, you know, what you're doing with CI, right? This is essentially what a lot of CI is. It's just improving collaboration, all the Git forges. Is it really improving on Git? Well, no, it's improving on collaboration. So these things go in the, co the collaboration bucket. Uh, now we get to the actually interesting part because to make this sustainable, something's gotta be monetizable. And that means organizations, companies, these are the, you know, the bigger checks come from. And what do they want? One of the things they want, yeah, they want collaboration, they want all the convenient stuff, but what distinguishes them is they usually want control. They want to be able to set a policy, they want to be able to enforce policies, they want to set access controls. These are the sorts of things that they want. So those sorts of features, cool. That goes into the control bucket. That gives us some way to decide where something goes. And I want to end a little bit on this concept of the ladder, um, or the learning curve or something, but. Um, this is useful for me mentally, so I want to maybe try to infect some minds with it, and we can start using this as uh, some terminology. So if I have to start the lowest rung of this ladder and jump to reach that top rung, I mean, I might get there. And if I can grab that top rung and, top rung and get to the top of the learning curve, and I pull myself up and get to the top, great. That's a lot of fun. I now have the superpowers. It's great. Except I might not succeed. Right? I might jump and fail, or I don't feel like jumping that day, and boom, that user, that adoption motion's gone. So this is the problems of a very steep learning curve. We could try to fix this a little bit, but again, there's no silver bullet, right? Because if you try to do one thing and to make it super easy, well, it might break, it might fail. You might end up having something that gets stuck halfway, and now you have no, nothing to stand on to make progress. So what do we do? All right, 
Maybe I can make it a little bit easier. I build another rung of the ladder, make it easy to climb to that point so now I can kind of reach that joy I want to reach. Well, still not perfect, but I could do a few things now. I can kind of maybe clearly describe what's at the top. This is the end of the story. Be able to shine a light on what are the benefits? Not just telling you, hey, do X, Y, Z, but like explain why. You're doing it because you want to reach this joy and I want to share that with you. There's a problem or a potential problem here. What happens if I build these rungs, but now you're kind of blocked from getting any farther? Now I have a step stool. This doesn't lead to joy, this leads to sadness. Now I'm stuck. I can't move on. I can't learn more about all the great things, all the superpowers, right? These superpowers, I want to make normal powers. So only simplifying or only hiding this, that's probably going to, it's going to lead to this situation. We'll have a step stool, but it's limited. Um, I want to get access to the entire uh, process. So that's the ladder. Ladder leads to happiness. It's where I want to be. It's where the, everyone has access to superpowers. But you can climb at your own pace. You don't have to jump up to the very top on day one just to understand how to do a double overlay adders thing to get your Python project in. Now, let's make it easier. Let's slowly let you climb the ladder. And every time you take a step up, you get more value. So let's build this ladder. Let's build that value. Let's tell and like support this story because that's what actually leads to happiness. We do have some time for questions, so any questions? Thanks a lot. Um, I really like this idea of um, adding on top of the open source ecosystem values, the values that are kind of, that only a company can do. Uh, at, this appears what Flux is doing. Um, do we have an idea, do we have a plan for where to put that boundary? So where does open source end and where does commercial stuff begin? So the, the guiding principle for that is the, those, the four C's there, right? So if there's something that's convenience, that's probably something that's convenient for everyone. Um, the, the services start coming in once you're in those things like uh, con, you know, uh, collaboration, right? You can imagine having the sorts of uh, collaborative features that you start getting with informing people about what it is they're doing across their various projects, right? This is very similar to existing uh, efforts that are out there. But I think the interesting question is, what you asked is like, how do you then figure out, how do you actually draw that line? It's fuzzy, but I think on the, on the very end of it, I think it's actually pretty clear that this notion of control, that's usually not going to be needed with that individual power user, that hobbyist, you know, even that like super small team as they're starting up. The control things, that's really what you want at high, large organization level. And so I think that allows us to separate these so there's no conflict. Because obviously what you don't want is there to be this kind of conflict of what becomes open, what becomes closed, what do you sell, what do you monetize, what do you not, now what? So trying to distinguish these things by having like categorizations and a set of values and how do I decide these things helps us potentially avoid that problem. And uh, forgot to mention, uh, we've got proof of concepts of this thing, we've got a beta out, so sign up for these things, go to fluxdev.com, a little pitch here, and you'll probably get to hear from one of us to kind of like walk you through things or bug you with tons and tons of questions because the whole point of this is to make it easy and well, that requires a lot of work, a lot of feedback, a lot of talking to people and let's make this happen. Thank you, one more round of applause.